The genetic material for SARS-CoV-2 is comprised of almost 30,000 bases or units. And of those bases, there's been approximately 20 different mutations that have occurred since its sequencing back in February. This means that SARS-CoV-2 has mutated less than 0.1%. Now these mutations have primarily arisen because SARS-CoV-2 carries its genetic material on RNA, which is highly susceptible to mutations. But luckily, SARS-CoV-2 mutation rate is far less than other viruses that also use RNA, such as HIV or the flu. But what's of most concern is any mutations that could occur on this spike protein. Now the spike protein is critical to interact with the ACE2 receptor on our human cells to allow for the virus to infect and then replicate. However, mutations that on the spike protein could change its shape, thus not allowing it to use this mechanism for infection, thus not being beneficial to the virus. But if we look at these mutations in a bit more depth, specific mutations on the spike protein of the newest type are known as N501Y. And what this means is on the instructions to make the spike protein at position 501, one amino acid has been changed to another. In this case, a spare gene has been changed to tyrosine. Now you can think of this like you're building a Lego set. And instead of using the next piece you're supposed to, you reach in and use a random piece. Now it might be the same size or it might be different. It could be a different color. This could change the actual toy that you're making or it could look the same. Now, no current research shows that this mutation is unable to interact with antibodies against the non-mutated form of the virus. But what current research is suggesting is that this mutated form does have a higher rate of transmission. But if we look at an older form of the mutation of SARS-CoV-2, one that was discovered back in early summer, known as D614G, again, at the instructions for the spike protein at position 614, one amino acid, known as aspartic acid, has now been changed to another amino acid, known as glycine. And this is very critical because glycine is super small. So this did change the structure of this spike protein. But what researchers found was that the antibodies against the non-mutated form were actually able to destroy the mutated form far better than the non-mutated form, thus showing us that these mutations aren't necessarily a bad thing. So what does this mean in terms of the mRNA vaccine against SARS-CoV-2? Now, when vaccines are designed, researchers take into account that mutations will occur, especially in pathogens that are highly replicating, such as viruses. And just because there's mutated forms of the virus circulating doesn't mean that the non-mutated form has stopped circulating. So we still need to get these antibodies against the non-mutated form and potentially these mutated forms in order to destroy SARS-CoV-2 before it can enter our human cells and prevent the further spread of this virus.